Are you frustrated with the image coming out of your Sony a6400? Are you not sure how the memory recall works? Have you been looking for a video to walk you through the step-by-step -step instructions of setting up your memory recall function? Well, you've come to the right video because today I'm gonna walk you through the step-by-step -step instructions on how to set up your memory recall function on your Sony a6400. Also, stick around until the very end of this video and I'm gonna give you my trick that allows me to switch between 4K and slow motion in seconds. First, you have to buckle up because we're about to do this thing next. Welcome to my channel. I'm Brian the Camera Guy and I review Sony cameras and accessories. If that's something that you're into, consider hitting that subscribe button and that bell notification so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Today I'm gonna to walk you through the step-by-step -step instructions on how to set up your memory recall functions on your Sony a6400. Don't have a Sony a6400? Don't click off just yet. This should also work on other Sony cameras. Instead, go ahead, grab your camera, and let's do this. First thing we have to do is we have to set up our video features for recording in 4K. I prefer 24 frames per second. You may prefer 30 frames per second. Let me know what frame rate you prefer to shoot in down in the comments below. Either way, I'm gonna show you how to set up 24 frames per second. If you want 30 frames, then you do you. You do you. What you have to do is switch your dial to the video mode. On the Sony a6400, that's the one right above the MR. This one right here. If at any time you need to pause the video or rewind to copy my settings, please feel free to do so. Also, feel free to save this video so you can watch it later. In case you ever get anything screwed up, you can always refer back to it at a later date. Next, we wanna go into the menu. Go into tab one, page five, the AF1. Here, you'll wanna set up your focus mode, continuous autofocus, and your focus area wide. Also, make sure that your AFS and your AFC are set to balance emphasis. Go to the next page, page six, select face, slash I autofocus set. Make sure that everything is on and you are set to human and auto for right and left eye select. Next, on page eight, make sure that your face priority in multi-metering is turned on. I also have my ISO set to a maximum of 102,000 400. Moving on to page 11, I like to keep my white balance set to auto and my priority set to standard. I also do not have any picture effects on. These are really gimmicky, but again, you do you. Next, move down to the picture profile. I shoot everything in PP10, which for me is Hyperlog Gamma 2. I do change the color mode out of the BT2020 into the Rec 709. I really like the way that the Rec 709 makes those skin tones look. For me, it's easier to color grade later. Also, YouTube really likes that Rec 709 look. If you wanna learn more about how to correct your white balance, I'll put a video up in the cards above and a link down in the description below. If you don't wanna color grade, go ahead and pick either picture profile off or PP1. PP1 is the standard picture profile and it does a great job with the colors. Everyone raves about Canon colors, but I personally like the Sony colors. Comment down below, are you hashtag team Canon or hashtag team Sony? Let's move on to tab two, page one, movie one page. This is where we're gonna set up either 4K or 1080p. You can do this under file format XAVCS 4K, while XAVCS HD is going to be your 1080p. I don't recommend using AVC HD. Trust me when I say, you just don't wanna use this format. After you select 4K, go to the record settings and go ahead and pick 24 frames. Pick 100 megabits or 60 megabits. If you pick 100 megabits, it's going to record more data and make it easier to color grade in post-production. I also think it just looks better. If you wanna pick 60 megabits, feel free. It will take up less room on your memory card and also later on down in storage. Also, if you want 30 frames per second, then go ahead and select that option here. Just know that if you pick 30 frames per second, there's gonna be a little bit bigger crop on the Sony a6400. That crop is gonna be about 1.2. If you are looking for the widest 4K, then you wanna pick 24 frames per second. Next, move the page two. I have AF drive speed set to normal and AF tracking sensor set to standard. I find that these work perfect for my camera, but you may have to adjust it based on your camera and how it reacts to the autofocus. Finally on this page, go to the audio recording levels. I generally have this set to 15. If I have a shotgun mic like the Rode Video Micro, you can set it between 14 and 17. For a lav mic, I would put it between four and nine depending on the mic. Sony's preamps are really good and you should not have any problem recording audio 
into the, your camera. Also, if you're using a wireless setup like I have right here, the Comical wireless system, the mics come out really hot. So I've actually turned the preamps on the mic down to a nine or a 10. They go as high as 30. And I've turned the audio level on the Sony a6400 all the way down to one. When you're recording, you generally want your audio levels to hit negative 12. Anything more than that, you risk clipping your audio. Now go to page three, turn on audio level display so that you can monitor your audio. Do not turn on wind noise reduction. It will make your sound like you're underwater, and that's no good. Also, turn on movie with shutter. This allows you to press the shutter button to start recording anytime you're in video mode. Go to page five and change the zoom setting to on, clear image zoom. This will allow you to crop in an additional 1.5 times on your focal length without losing any quality in your video. This is an amazing feature as it will allow you to make any prime lens into a zoom lens. For example, if you have the Sigma 16 millimeter F1.4, my favorite lens for these talking head videos, that's the equivalent of a 24 millimeter full frame lens on a full frame body. If you slap on that clear image zoom, it turns it into a 35 millimeter lens. Two lenses for the price of one. Now move on to page six, zebra settings. I turn these on and will set them to 95 when I'm outside. This helps make sure that you are not clipping your skies. Or you could set it to 70. And if you get these lines on your face, then you know that you're overexposed. And that's because generally you want your skin tones to be between 55 and around 65 when it comes to exposure level. Instead, you should expose to just get these lines on your face and then dial back on the ISO or the F-stop by one stop. Remember, don't change your shutter speed. It should always be double your frame rate. So 24 frames per second, that's 1 50th. And for 30 frames per second, that's 1 60th. I also like to turn the rule of thirds grid on. It just helps me compose my shots a little bit better. On page eight are all the custom keys. If you want me to do a dedicated video about this page, comment down below with custom keys. Also, if this video is helping you or you're getting any value out of it, go ahead and smash that like button. Now, back to the video. Page nine, make sure you change the function of touch operation to touch tracking. This enables Sony's real-time tracking. This allows you to tap on the screen and track a person or an object. Also, turn movie button to always. Now that we have our video function set up, it's time to program our memory recall buttons. Go back to tab one, page four. Select MR memory. Now I put all of my 4K 24 frames per second in slot one. So go ahead and push the select button. You now have 4K 24 frames per second set in slot one. To test it, change the dial to MR and you should get this menu. Press the select button and you're good to go. Want slow motion? No problem. Go back to the movie mode button on your dial. Now go back to tab two, page one and change the file format to XAVC SHD. Go to the record settings and select either 120 frames per second or 60p. Remember, if you're recording 4K 24 frames per second, then 60p is going to be 2.5 times slow motion and 120p is gonna be five times slow motion. Meaning a five second clip in 120p will be 25 seconds when you convert it to 24 frames per second. Wanna see another video on how I edit slow motion clips? Then comment down below with slow motion, please. After you select 120p or 60p, go back to tab one, page four, and select memory recall. Go back to tab one, page four, and select MR memory. Select slot number two and click that select button. You now have 4K in slot number one and 1080p, either 60 or 120 in slot number two. Bonus tip time. If you wanna switch fast between 4K and slow motion, here's my bonus tip to make it super fast. Go to tab six and find the page that has add item. Select that and go to page four. Select MR recall. This will put a shortcut in your My Menu. You can now quickly switch between 4K and 120 frames per second. And that is how easy it is to use the memory recall button. If you have any questions, make sure you use that comment box down below. If you like this video, then I'm sure you'll like the video that's on the screen now, which is all about how to correctly white balance your Sony camera. Go ahead and click on that video now, and I'll see you 
on that video. Make sure you like, subscribe, and ring the bell. Brian, out.